All right. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Andrew Durand. I'm Brad Fitzpatrick. And we are uh, members of the Go team. And we're going to record uh, a bit of a hacking session today. We have a, a project that we need to do as part of the Go the migration from Mercurial to Git. Yeah, we kind of forgot this step. So when we moved everything to GitHub and to Garrett, um, we forgot that tip.golang.org is still running on Google infrastructure doing RPCs to the old Mercurial server. And there's a virtual file system that runs like a weird mix of GoDoc with a virtual file system that like, whenever you access it, it does RPC to the Mercurial backend. And we're going we're gonna to destroy all that, and we're going to rewrite it. In, um, well, yeah, we're going to yeah. rewrite it as a App Engine app that's all open source. And um, yeah, so actually, tip, if you don't know, tip.golang.org, tip um, which yeah, I can up. load up here, um, is stale at the moment because it, it shows like what the current documentation for you know the head of the repo is and in Mercurial language. That's the tip, um, and so we want to rejig this so that it shows the head of the Git master for the Go repo. So you can see all the latest docs as they flow in. And it's pretty cool because like you know you make a submit and you can go see like you know what the Go doc will actually look like. Yeah, and um, I mean you should check before you submit, but yeah, you, should. you know it's good to see it. Um, and the old version was actually kind of trashy in that whenever it detected a change, it just it crashed itself and let the Google infrastructure restart it because the GoDoc server cached too much state. Mm -hmm. And so we figured it was easier just to like, detect a change, crash, and reboot, and come up. <laughs> so we're going to kind of take the same approach here, I think. Yeah, but so maybe we, have, we haven't we really designed this too much, but the um, I have, I have oh. a black one. Oh, yeah. that's a black one. We're, so we're going to kind of make an. We're going to use um, App Engine Manage VMs. Maybe you bring up that page. Yeah. And so the difference with App Engine Manage VMs is that um, you're allowed to do whatever you want. It runs like in a secure virtual machine and Docker container and all this stuff. So so instead could, of being constrained to the usual yeah. App Engine environment where you can't run processes, yeah. you can't access the file system, you can instead you basically get a VM in which to operate. And the good thing for us is we don't have to deal with. Uh, HTTPS certificates or anything, because the App Engine environment that will deal with all that. So, at the end result is we'll have you know HTTPS tip.golang.org, and you know you'll have App Engine here, Google App Engine, and then it will come to us and it'll like you know make the VM for us. We don't have to deal with that, and it will run our Docker container in here. And within our Docker container, we're going to have our main process. That's which, really small. Yeah, we'll we'll zoom out. So within our Docker container. <laughs> So imagine this is all we're writing, and the App Engine will deal with the rest of it. Request will come in, and what we're going to write is a Go little program here, it's which called tip Go doc. Uh, yeah, tip tip Go doc. Go doc, and it's just going to be a HTTP reverse proxy that monitors the head of the Git server, and it will have two worlds underneath of it. We'll call it like World A and World B. And at any point, it'll be either reverse proxying to A, which is live, and then it'll be out here like pulling the internet and saying, "Is there a new Git? Is there a new Git? Is there a new Git hash or whatever?" And this is Garrett, which is where this is our upstream Git server, and um, this is where we do code review and stuff. And when we notice a change there, what we're going to do is we're going to update this world, world B or world A, whichever one is not live. We're going to Got to get get update, fast forward it. We're going to rebuild GoDoc. So rebuild all of Go, rebuild all of GoDoc, set up GoPath and all that stuff. Wait for this thing to come up, and once it's up, we're going to tell this to start proxying over here, and then shut down this one and kind of like destroy this world. And then next time that we notice that the Git gets updated, then we're going to like re-spin up this whole world and switch traffic again. Yeah, and so we'll probably have to wait, you know, to see if these processes die or something. Then maybe we'll have to do something. We this is about the extent of our planning, and so we're just kind of just we're, do it the best way and just like start hacking and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna write some code and see how far we get before the battery so we, runs out. So this is a good place to start. Package main. Um, so so it, this is ultimately a web server. So let's start out the typical way. Yeah. So we'll just start with a handler. And if I save that, we get some imports. Um, well, make a, make a main for now. We won't have to have a main later for App Engine, but we'll need a main for testing. Oop. 
Yep. I'll do local host. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. My firewall will, win will complain. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I always do that too. Yeah, so that if listen and serve fails, we get a nice error message instead of just a silent exit. OK. Um, so ultimately, this thing is going to be a reverse proxy. So that's all. Every incoming HTTP request um, will basically go off and send it somewhere else. I guess we could have a, a status a page. Proxy. Yeah, we could have a status page that says, are, well, we, we, are we going to A or are we going to B? Well, maybe we should start by if we have a proxy, like a type proxy, which contains the state of the proxy. And it can implement serve HTTP yeah, and okay. be the HTTP server. So, and this is this is actually kind of like the owner of everything, right? Yep. Um, and so this will become a method, and this will be a just like that for now. Mm -hmm. um, and so. This will usually be serving the proxy requests. So like, if we have a special case status, status. Yeah, let's call it, call it, um, well, that may be oh, It needs to be something GoDoc doesn't implement, so. Yeah. How about tip status? OK. And then I'll just call status w. Or p dot, p dot serve status. Uh, oh, right. Call it serve status just to make it normal conventions, and then w comma r. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you insist. And return from there. Yep. Uh, return. Okay. So then we have we have world A and B. Um, let's. Or where do you want to start? Um, yeah. I mean, we could just uh, make a mutex here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in Emacs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this okay. is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. I'll have to remember how to use Vim. Um, so we can have, like, maybe this is the, you know, target. And this could just be, like, the uh, host port to send to. OK. I mean, this is going to, this is a really low QPS service. And I don't really care about lock contention. I don't care it being, I mean, this this isn't like going to be our best okay. work probably. We're we're trying to shoot for doing this quickly. Okay. So now that we have a target, this thing needs to do the reverse proxy trick. So it's probably worth talking about some conventions here. Like um, oh yeah. Generally, you know, like you generally put mutexes before the thing they guard, and you'll generally have like a blank line above it. So if we had some like fixed state here, we would have some fixed state, and then you'd have a blank line and. I mean, you and then can, this you implies that target is predicted by that mutex. Yeah, and sometimes you would um, put a comment after sync that mutex and saying like what it guards. But if you just have it like that, it's um, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. All right. So now we should actually just make it reverse proxy through to the target. Yeah. So um, when you go look at the the GoDoc for the HTTP util package, there's a reverse proxy in there that we'll just use. This is a great. Uh, you don't have the hacking gopher extension in Chrome. No, I'm sorry. I should have the hacking gopher extension. So plug for the hacking gopher extension. Um, and then we have the reverse proxy type. So the problem with this is there's no zero value for this. So we're probably going to have to make a constructor for the um, the proxy type rather than just using the zero value. Because we're going to have to initialize this reverse proxy with new reverse proxy. Well, maybe actually this should be. Um, and we can create a new one whenever we flip. Yeah, OK. And then this just becomes. <laughs> well, you can't access proxy without the lock. Oh, yeah. So p.mu.lock. And then, and then um, proxy colon equals p.proxy. Yeah. p.mu.unlock. And maybe at the, at the beginning, if proxy is nil after your unlock, then we re just return a 500 yeah. error because you know maybe we're just booting up. Yeah. Oh, show the app YAML file, even though we're not going to be using um. So just because we're lazy, we're specifying that this is um, uh, we're saying manual scaling one, which means hey, app engine, we don't need any help with um. 
doing things, we're just going to say always have one instance running. And this thing basically will just run forever. And occasionally it'll crash and App Engine will restart it. But so yeah, if we serve 500, sometimes while we're booting up, we don't really care too much. This yeah. is this is not a high availability service. Yeah, and most of the time they just be, will be a single instance yeah. just running and it'll be fine. Um, it should be error. Uh, not ready. 500. You should use you know HTTP. Yeah. Status. Uh, status. Something. Internal server error. I I, I, I don't know what it is. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Not ready yet. I think that's implied. Cool. OK. So uh, now I think we need a constructor for the proxy, because we're going to want to initialize things when the program starts. Um, or are we not there yet? No, that could be good. I mean, you could just say um, after p.proxy, you could just say like go, go p. p. Dot run. Yeah. And now we have something that will actually get mm -hmm. us going. Run a loop forever. Yeah. Um, it's a good place to start. Okay, so in the when we updated the continuous build for um, running, when you show build.golang.org in your browser. Oh yeah. So when we updated um, the builders the other day, there's you see all the commits going down um, the left side here, and there's a thing that runs every like ten seconds and pulls the Git server and says, you know, is there anything new? And so the handler for that, if you go to like a shell window or something, um, there's this file at go.googlesource.com slash uh, b equals master format equals json. If we look at that, uh, it's this json file that says all the repos and what their current master is. So basically, we want to also pull this. So we'll slurp this like every, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 seconds or something. Mm -hmm. And when it comes up, then we'll see if, like, I guess the only two repos we care about is the Go one, which is, you know, and then because GoDoc is in tools, we'll have to look at uh, tools. And so maybe we look at the two masters there, and if the combination of that ever changes, then we kick off a whole new build of, like, World A or World B. I'm a little concerned about building tools, because what if tools, what if GoDoc's broken? What if the GoDoc build breaks? Well, more motivation to fix it. Tip just goes down. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, I agree. Okay. I mean, we look at build.golang.org and we see the breakage and we go fix it. Yep. I mean, yeah. like again, this isn't like a really important service. Well, we can always change that yeah. policy anyway. Let's just see um, how quickly we can build so, something. Yeah. So, so we, we actually, actually have. Yeah, we have we have a polar for this already at the bottom of watcher.go in the tools repo, and it's. Paul Garrett and Tickle. It's this one. Get Garrett. Garrett Metamap. Get the comments too. Yeah. You know, if we were um, responsible people, we would put this in a package and share this Garrett polling stuff, but we're not. So meta meta URL. And what's go base? That one. Yeah. Put these at the top. Constants at the top. I is, just is just concatenate policy. them together. There's no reason to have them separate now. Just call it meta URL. Oh, but now I don't even have a list, so I have to unfactor these. I don't. To satisfy my OCD. <laughs> and so now I'll just make sure I got all of that by doing a go install. And so I did. I, okay. I pulled all the right bits. So Yay, go imports. Yay. Oh, yeah, so you did all that. Beautiful. Um, and so, okay. So this thing basically hits Garrett and returns a map from a repo to the thing it is. So let's go to the top and let's just test this, this function works. So in your main, before starting the thing, just do a. All right, I What's did. it called? Okay. Um, pump, um, printf. I don't know. Garrett meta map, and we'll just return. Um, and there it is. Looks good. So we only really care about two things from here. We care about the. Um, oh, you exited. Did I exit? I exited. So in our loop, we're going to um, get the meta map. 
Uh, uh, and it's heads, it really is. Heads, OK. Uh, and, and the function returns nil if there's any error, and what the other watcher code does. So if it's nil, just sleep and continue or something. Make a flag for this, OK? Or star sleep interval if you make it a flag. Yeah. Set up some flags. Time for some, it's time for flags. It's time for flags. Uh, so the duration flag is awesome. I love it. So handy. Uh, Instead of sleep, I think be consistent oh. with the watcher. What do we call it? interval in the watcher code? Poll interval. Poll. This poll. Done. Uh, flag dot parse at the beginning of main. Yeah, and I also want to put in generally call that listen. Yeah. This one doesn't really matter, though, because once we convert it to App Engine, it won't have that listen flag anymore. So, oops, makes you happy for now. Go for it. Well, Pull. I've already done it now. OK. And then this guy's probably going to be at the bottom of the loop, too. All right. So um, how do you make a variable out there? Or I could do it. Um, In proxy, or what do you want to do? Um, I don't use Emacs, if you can tell. Um, Vim. Or so I use you Emacs. You do use Emacs. Yeah, whatever. Um, so maybe we have like the last uh, signature of um, of Go repo plus tools repo hash or something like that. And a signature. Oh, it's just a. Dun, dun, dun. You mean it will just be that plus that? Yeah, or something like that. And so then here we can do. Um, Oops. Do you want me to do it? Uh, oh, there you go. No, you can do it. <laughs> 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 Say something like, you know, sig mm. is heads of go plus heads of tools or something. They can just be concatenated. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, whatever. And you know, uh, maybe, actually, if we want to print it, we're going to want to something like that. Oh, the if. Um, and now, if it's the same as last, you know, then you could just sleep and continue, or if they're different, you can call a function or something. This is kind of getting gross. Yeah, we can change it later. Factor it out. All right, so now we got to update the world. Yes. And so we got to keep track of, like, you know, what world we need to update, whether we're on A or B. So why, why don't we guard more stuff with a mutex and have, like, side we're on, which is either, like, a side or B well, side. Should this be, should last be in the proxy as well? It doesn't yeah, need to be. Doesn't I, to I generally be. don't put more crap in the in the struct unless okay. it's needed. Because um, it makes it more obvious who owns that data, right? Like only yeah. that Go routine. Yeah. I also like to put comments above things that run in their own Go routine, like above that run, add a little thing that's like, you know, runs on its own. What, what? Oh, I guess we don't. Maybe, maybe we only need to keep the side on here. Yeah, I mean. Okay. So make a variable called like side and initialize it to A. I don't know. We'll use this as a directory name too. Yeah. And um, And then. And now oh. here being like, say, you know, new side. Can't, can't we just create like, can we just have the directory name? So we have like the current directory, and then there's the like uh, future directory. And then once current is rotated out, we just blow the directory away, and then we create a new one. No, we don't want to oh, blow we it away. Fetching, we we want to keep the We want to use the get stuff around. Okay. So, okay. Ju just say. Okay. 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 Let's do that for now. And then. Um, so now we'll want to make a variable for like the new side. You know, say. The, the new side that we're going to initialize. So this is like the currently active side. Yes. Right? Yes. We also have to deal with, um, you know, well, this will initialize it at the first time. 
I think we, maybe we, mm, OK. Go for okay. it. Go for it. Um, so something like, you know, uh, new side uh, is whatever b and f side equals b, then new side. I'm going to rely on gofumpt instead of yep. relying on my vim skills. Yep. Um, That's a good idea. Good point. Something like that. And then we're going to say something like, no, init side or something. Yeah, as a as a method, probably. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll do that. Oh, I still remember something. <laughs> um, All right, so then, let's, let's write that. Oh, no, you want to do more okay. high level. Well, I guess we don't need um, that anymore. Um, OK, so now it's now and one, once it's initialized, and I guess it, this could air flip. out too, right? So maybe um, check yeah. check the air from there, and if it's if it's actually nil, then we need to um, grab the mutex and in, and change the reverse proxy. So let's do that first of all. And maybe init side also returns um, the IP port of it, in addition to the air. So like host port comma air. Okay. I guess I'll do if. Oh, and you want to do if it's nil. Oh, yeah. OK, that's fine. So something will happen. Yeah. Maybe for now, we'll just. I think it's time to move this to a, a poll method from run and move the time.sleep just into run. So we don't have 20 different time.sleep calls in here. There should only be one. Then we need to abstract out all the local variables, right? Do we want to return an, an error? Mm. Or does it not matter? Yeah, we can do it later. Let's. That. So get all that crap. Now it's in its own function. We won't worry about that for now. Just print this error. Keep get rid of all. The, get rid of the other sleep. Yeah. Okay. And now this. Now we have to deal with this. So. Yeah. Last. No, no, no. Under the mutex, not above the mutex. Oh, so we're going to protect it all by the same mutex. Yeah. Who cares? So now it's I mean, I guess you don't have to. You could just put a comment saying it's owned by the poll loop. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay. The comment above it. Okay. And that's not going to work. So initialize it at the beginning of run. P dot side is a. All right. So. And so now, um, after now you're not using the host port variable. Yeah, I'm just going to create the this method, just so we remember what's going on. Bit of documentation in the function signature. And so now we by here we actually have a running instance of Godoc. Or it could be about to be running. We don't know if it's like started up yet. Or I guess we could make an it side do that. Yeah, I was thinking init side would just block until it's healthy. Okay. Or it's timed out because we don't want to start building a new one until at least that one's happened. Yeah, okay. So at this point, we want to grab the mutex and update the reverse proxy. Yeah. So, and here you could just say defer the unlock. Yeah. Uh, nice taking out of the loop because now we can use defer. Yeah, exactly. Is there, there's not a constructor, is there? No. Oh, there is actually. New single host reverse proxy. Is that what the one we want? Yep, we're going to a single. Okay. But it takes a URL, not a string. Oh yeah, okay. So we can say you is URL dot URL. No, no, no. URL dot uh, parse. Oh, so we want to do. And that's u comma error. Yeah. Serintef. 
print off. Uh, just HTTP. We're not going to be running oh, yeah, this of course. on local host as a. It's just become my habit. It's a good habit. Um, sure. It's not going to happen, but whatever. Yeah. Um, That's it. Yep. Wow. All right. Effective standard. And, uh, and change the side. P dot side equals new side. Good call. All right. right. So now we have to uh, init a side. What have we got? What? Oh, I've done something wrong. <laughs> I hate this this syndrome. Seventy two. Missing paren at the end. There you go. Okay. Great. All right. So anything aside, we'll need. Um, well, I think at first we actually need to create a temporary directory for all of this. No, we. I don't, nah, we don't need to. We'll just use the standard one. No, I mean that's where our sides A's and B. A and we'll B. We'll just will do both it. In, we'll just do it in that loop. In an init side, we can just do it. Create a temporary directory. Yeah. But don't we want to keep them in the same place? Um, Always. Well, I mean, we know it's running in a Docker container, so we could we don't need to even use the tempter function. We could just say, "What is the base tempter?" Which is you know going to be like slash temp whatever, okay. and just do file path join from there. Okay. So this should work whether it exists or not. Yeah. So um, first, we need to figure out where the directory is. Okay. So it's going to be um, what os dot tempter. Is that it? Um, <laughs> I got it. Let's use the web. Hang on. Oh. We can edit this out. But we won't, because we're lazy. OK, so tempter, that's where it is? OK. Yep. OK. So now do file path join of that. And then maybe. Um, Tip go doc, comma side. side yeah. Good enough. Now do an OS make dir all yeah. of dir zero seven five five, and if that returns an error, return it. I would just put the if in there. Yeah. A short expression. Um, and now we want to. Uh, so we need to figure out the directory structure for uh, this. Oh so wait, wait. First, we need to figure out whether we're creating. No, no. no but let's not. talk. Let's talk about what the directory okay. structure okay. is. Like first, so it'll be, we're going to have something like temp tip go doc a, and then underneath that we'll have we're, go. We're going to need go. a we're going to need a go path to be able to um, install stuff. Yeah. So we'll probably need a go one, and then we'll have, you know, dot get. Then copy that line, and and, and then, then we'll need a go, go path. path, and that will have source slash calling x tools. So those are the two directories we'll have. Why don't you keep that comment there? That'll be good for. Okay. And so you can make variables for those two or something like that, if you want. Okay. And so then we can see if they're there, and we can go into either a. Um, Uh, go get. Shouldn't really use forward slashes there, but it doesn't matter. Apparently, Russ told me today that it will work. Well, it, it does path that clean or whatever, and yeah. uses them, so it's fine. Well, that's yeah. And uh, tools do. But that's not really the go dir; it's the go get dir. Tools get dir. Uh, wait, where's the? Why is there a go doc in there? I think you. How did that happen? Yeah, just go path. That's it. Yep. Um, oh. OK, so now you'll want to, for each of those files, why, why don't you make a function that takes a get dir and tells you? Um, I just want to do this one. No, we're not, not going to use this. What if it returns an error? Well, if it exists, OK. I would make, I would make one function that says, Yo, I want this Git rep repository to exist at this path and just return an error. Okay. And 
So here we want, so to use this, we'll check out, well, we don't really want go git do, do we? We want like that. That's where we want them to be. Sure. And then we're going to have to get the, the base directory of that to like run go clone from. Or it'll do that if we pass that parameter. OK. So now get rid of the git der <laughs> names. <laughs> Oh my god. Is that really going to happen? Is go repo a. Uh, it will be a constant. OK. Why don't we just type it here? We're only using it exactly one place. We may have to find a new room. Toolster. Oh, yeah. OK, and check errors on these. Null. No. Oh, that returns, that doesn't return just error. That's right. You could, use, you could use naked returns here if you wanted to not use colon equals. I don't want to do that. OK. I don't believe in that. In general, naming return parameters is only good for documentation. You should never use it for naked returns. And in general, you should never use naked returns. Always, always name your return parameters. Yeah. OK. So um, the checkout code, first you want to check to see whether the git repo actually exists. And if, we, if it does, we're done. Oh, I said always name your return parameters. I meant always, always yeah, be yeah, well. Yeah. Don't use naked return. But you, sh you don't always name the ones up, up. Here. Yeah. Only name it if it makes it clear. Like I wasn't was, talking about that. At I all. know, I said it wrong. OK. I'm just talking about this function. OK. We so, so, first we want to check to see if .git exists. And if it yeah. does, we're done. No, no, no. But at that point, we need to uh, update it to the revision that it should be at. Or are we going to do that in a later step here? Well, mm. we're not passing to init side what hashes it should be at. Yeah, so we need to pass in. How about side, comma, go hash, tools hash? And then here, we will say heads go, heads tools. So now checkout can take that hash. Yep. And I think it should be in the middle. OK. Like the clone. Then it and then now this takes repo hash and path. OK. So uh, stat of file path join dot mm. git. OK. Error not equals null. OK. And then say if, you know, if, if it is not OS does not exist. Oh, so first I'll do, first I'll do OS is not exist. This is the good case. And that's the bad case. So this will return the error. And this one will say clone. OK. Git. Oh, first we need to make the directory. Yeah, make dir all the parent of it. File path base. Is that right? Mm hmm. 075. And so now we git clone repo path. Okay, is there an argument we can pass to git clone to get it to clone at a specific hash? Um, no, but w well, we have to do that anyway. So let's just. OK, yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And dot run after that. Yeah. I'd put that in an if too. And if we wanted to, we can like grab the output from this and say why it failed, but we're being lazy for now. Maybe we put a to do in there being like, capture the output of git clone. It's probably like a quota error or something. I put that inside the, uh, the error block. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> OK. Oh. OK. So now we want to run, um, what's that? Uh, else if. OK. Now we'll want to do a get fetch in that directory. Yeah. Well, maybe so, I should do that in an else now. No, nah, whatever. It's fine. Just go do another. 
But we're going to have to change the directory, so you have to assign that to a variable. Which? This one you're running right oh, here. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, git fetch. Oh my god, fingers. Um, no, 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 not run, because oh, you yeah, have to yeah, set yeah. Uh, dir first to uh, uh, path. path. And then command to run. Okay, now we're going to um, check out. Uh, reset hard to the hash. Yeah, and that way we blow away any. Colon equals won't work here. It's not declaring a new variable. You still want command equals. We can't use colon equals. Uh, reset dash dash hard head. No, not head. Uh, hash. hash. Hard hash. Um, I think uh, man git reset. There is an option to make sure that you trample anything that's not in git ignore. I think if we have git ignored files, they won't be reset. You want to just do a, uh, how about we just do a clean before or after? Okay. <laughs> Interesting syntax. Okay, and now a clean. And is there an option to clean to do that? Or is that something else? I don't know. There's options for everything. It's git, I know. Fetch, reset. We could definitely have I mean, a function to do We this. have to clean because we're going to have all this crap left over from the previous build and all this stuff. So. Yeah, that's fair. Um, what arguments to clean do we need? I feel like there's a dozen. Like, mm, Man, quick, 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 get clean. Uh, Move untracked directories in addition to untracked files. That yeah, seems let's like let's do D. Let's do D F, F X, X D F X. Done. Done. Okay, so now we have a repo in the correct state. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, and is that that's it's that's checkout. That's what it should do. Okay. So that should actually just be a return. OK. Oh. Um, wait, wait. This, what's this whole function called? Checkout. OK, cool. OK. OK. Now we can um, let's run make.bash in the Go directory. Yep. Exec. Command. Uh, we have to change the dir again, so you'll have to assign yeah. it to it. Yep. I usually go back to the why, side of the line. Why do you call it make or something? Because we're going to have a lot of commands. And it's in the source directory. Yep. Uh, that's not that's not path anymore. It's um. Oh, it is dir. Okay. Oh no, it's go dir. Go slash. It's yep. Go dir from. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we can definitely tidy this up so it's not so repetitive, but for now it's okay. Okay. And now let's run um, the Go build. Go, uh, go install uh, Go doc. Does the env get passed through by default when you do exit yeah. command? If it's nil, yeah. Okay. So now we actually want to run. Um, we need to, to execute the go command that we just built. Yep. So that's in go to bin slash go. Yep. And <laughs> I use file path to get the first slash, and then you just type the second one. Well, it's, it'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, Golang dogs like x slash tools slash come slash go doc. And then, so this is install. Installed, uh, it needs to be anywhere. It doesn't well, actually matter. And you have to set your go path for this one. Yeah. So, so the env must be um, 
Now, GoDoc is special that it always puts it under the, uh, the Go root. That's yeah. true. So, so we don't actually need to set like the Go bin or anything like that. OK, so let's have a function called env. And what we'll do is set go root to Wait, why do go. we need a function? Because we need to take the original environment and clean the other crap out of it. No, we don't. Because, well, in App Engine, we won't have any other stuff. So just do we need any other dependencies apart from go? Just, just no, put we don't. We don't. So this works on your machine. Just put yours first. Use append and append yours onto it. I think I don't think we need the existing environment, do we? Uh, there might be things like home and what path do we need that? Okay. I mean, Go shouldn't need any of that. We'll see. You need more than Go there. <laughs> I am getting there. Getting there. I don't know. I'm skeptical that this is enough of an environment for it to work. Let's see. What's the worst going to happen? I expect you to say something. <laughs> OK. Time of it. OK. So now we have Godoc installed. Now, so now this needs to keep running. Well, and uh, we need to wait for it and all that stuff. And we need a. Um, In fact, this n is going to be useful. So I'll keep it. Because GoDoc will run with the same environment. No, you don't need Go root later. It's baked into the. Into GoDoc? No. Go Let's just be safe. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, you don't need it for the, the go command itself. It knows its own go root when you sure. run make that bash. Sure. That's fine. But what if there's a local? Anyway. Yes, yes, I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're not saying anything interesting. Yeah, there's construction next door, apparently. Which we didn't know. Uh, no, what is it? Go to then go doc. Command. I don't like calling it um, CMD because it makes me think it's an exec.cmd from the previous variable. OK, go bin. Now it sounds like it's go bin. That's fine. OK. Um, and this is going to have some arguments. We need to pick like a host and port for it. Yeah, why don't we just pick two arbitrary ones? So, for now. Or you can make them flags if you want. Like side A. Yes, yeah, uh, you know, 8082 and 8083 or something. We pass the side to this as a function, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna just going to say 8081. We can fix this later. If side equals. Got enough. How do we know when it's ready? We do dash v? No, no, no. We could just sit and pull it. Oh, yeah. And we could just do an HTTP request every. So n now we this would no. give us a go doc. Um, but and for debugging, why don't you set standard out and standard error to your system one so we can watch it? OK. I think standard error is where the logs go. That's the important one. Yeah. OK, start. That will return error. So where are we going to put this command, go.command? Should we return that? Um, to, what to do we, why do we need to return it? Well, so don't like, we need to wait on it or something? Yeah, we can start a go routine to wait on it. And then maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah. here. So we have a go.doc that started. Um, well, we don't want to return yet until now. It's we started. want to poll until it's yeah. ready. So why don't we um, give it, you know, uh, 
make a little for loop, one to one to fifteen or something. We'll fifteen we'll, is good enough. We'll time dot sleep one second, and um, just do an HTTP get on it every so often. Uh, should I do slash package? Why? Doesn't matter. Well, we will eventually want to hit the search page to see when the search index is ready. Mm, okay. That's that's going to be, but for now, we'll just poll to see when yeah. the HTTP server comes up. Um, and that is host port. Okay, uh, yeah, res comma error. You like res? Yeah. If error is nil, uh, not continue. Nil. And if uh, res.status equals test status code equals 200. Break. Or HTTP.status OK if you don't like using constants. If you do like using constants. If you do like. Um, no, we don't want to just break, because maybe you want to reach well, actually, nil if, here. But if we reach here 15 and we exit, then well, it's not ready. So why oh, here, we wanna, here we want to return, return nil. nil. Yeah. yeah. So, and in this case. Uh, and you probably also want to. Um, Regardless, you want to start a Go routine here after the start is succeeded, and then then call uh, if error colon equals go doc dot wait. I guess yeah. you, we don't really care what the error is at all. Well, we'll print it. Side do printf. Side present q or something whatever exited with. Present B error. There you go. And then we probably want to put a to do there that will like tell our proxy that a side is dead. I'm going to label this okay. to you. Uh, and then we'll like, you know, restart it or something. Switch to the other box. Switch to the other box. Um, we're going to reuse this earth so I can do something with it. Will that work? Do we have an error in this scope? Nope, we don't. Um, you also want to uh, res.body.close. But you can't defer. Oh, you can defer, actually. Uh, just, just do it unconditionally. We're not going to read the body, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. OK. Looks Maybe good. later we'll read the body to see if it contains like search indexes ready or something like that. Okay. Okay. So. Oh wait, where's where's the error? There's no error yet. Mm -hmm. It could return like 400 or something like that. So why don't you just return like timeout waiting for return errors dot new. I don't I don't like this error. Oh okay. Because it may not be an error. It could be just a 400, 15 times in a row. Yep. So. Waiting for side blah at. Host port or something. And I'll also put the error value in brackets just in case. Uh, well, side red. host port. Well, that, you know, we don't know what that error will be. Yeah. It might be useful. Maybe not. We'll see. So now we have in its side, create sides. Is this? Is this done? I don't know. See if it runs. Run it. See what happens. We don't have much output on the Git clones and stuff. That's going to be slurping. Should I? 50, 60 meg over. Well, why don't I add some standard out, standard error to those? Oh, because they're, we're just calling run on them straight away, are we? Probably. Right. Nope. There we go. Oh, it's the clones. Mm. Hey, and it, since this isn't making a tempter every time, when we do uh, subsequent runs of this program, we'll be able to test different code paths. I mean, ideally, this would have proper tests, but oh. come dot. Yeah, yeah. 
There we go. <laughs> I'm asked. Undefined last. Peter last. Not enough arguments to return. Okay. <laughs> is that this the is right a one? familiar little dance. Which function are we in? Oh, the host port one. No new variables. What? Oh, it's a um, return value. Burr redeclared. Oh, we did have one. Okay. Multiple value or a stat. There you go. Now we're in Australia, so. Oh, this come on. The, takes ban a while. the bandwidth here is fine. It's the latency that sucks. Oh, you know what we could do? We could work on that status page. Status page it is. So now the serve sort of status? Yeah, so these things are actually owned by oh, the yeah. whole loop, so maybe we do need some locking while it's not doing things that are really slow or something. Or we could just we can mirror them into the when something notable happens, we could we could denormalize it <laughs> to be lazy for now. You know, this init side doesn't actually need to be a method on proxy at all. So that why? Because it doesn't use Pete on anything, and that means that in here we can write um, uh, I was thinking locking could happen. We can hey, still do so that. Add, add a comment above poll saying where it runs. Where it runs from within the loop. You mean? Yeah, th I mean, this is from the, this is in the what yeah, go routine. Run OK. And then on run, say, runs in its own go routine. Um, so like this could, that's not necessary. No. But this, we can, okay. Locking there, and so now we can just make sh make this is also owned by that. Okay, and then uh, since there's more than one, put a comment on um, mu saying owns the following. Yeah, good enough. The following. Oh, the following. <laughs> why, why, why not? How's your get clone doing? We got. What? Oh, it's doing tools now. Okay, oh, and no. the head the head worked. Cloning into tip go dog a go. B, it's it's done B. It's going back and forth. Interesting. Why is it going back and forth? Was there a commit? Are we setting? We're not setting last. Peter last. Okay. Peter last okay. equals sig. That would help. Wouldn't it? Oh. You need, that's now, um, I like the other way around. Sig equals last sig. Oh my god. You have such weird things that you're particular about. OK. And this, we'll put there, make some space, kill that nonsense. Let's write the status page before we run this again. 
Or should we run it now? It's fine. We'll get rid of the status page. All right, grab the lock, defer the unlock. This will be really short. Yeah. Uh, let's just fump to fprintf right to w. No HTML template noise. Side equals, last sig equals. Are you going to make, do. OK. Is that it? Is it just called last? Inside, OK. Yeah, I think so. All right. Yep, last inside. Well, that um, defaulted text HTML in the sniffing, why don't you set an explicit um, text It'll plane header? Trust it. I never trust the sniffing. Oh, p.mu. Moo. Do you say mu or moo? Mu. Moo. I don't know. Hey, look at that. We have well, a server. What do we call it again? Uh, underscore tip proxy tip status. Steps. Hey, side A. And what, no last because it's still updating? Mm -hmm. It's building. You can see at the top here. We should have sent the build logs to stand it out as well. Do it. Kill it. Start it over. All right. Where's my make.bash? Make.dir make, make dot, make dot is up there. You yeah. just were on it. No, I know. I'm just getting some. What the hell? Your Vim ways are strange and confusing to me. Such is the way of Vim. You could so use a helper for all of this. Yup. We'll clean it later. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now we're building. And once again, we should see that tip status is in that state. Why is it so slow? Because I'm running a puny little MacBook Air. <laughs> Poor little MacBook Air. No interesting mail. I still find it weird to see these rsc.io <laughs> packages in the standard library. It's cool. I like the internal thing. Yeah, it works. OK, so that installed. Now it's running Godoc, it says. So oh. now it must be polling Godoc. And maybe it's just running. Maybe we're in the state. Uh -huh. It was side, OK. And what side B is now, which it should, OK. Yeah, because it started off on side A, okay. which was empty. That works. Proxy hit through it. to Godoc. Hit it with your browser. Look at that. So what change can we make to Well, it has to, to be so, it has to be something we could observe here. Yeah. So we could change a doc somewhere, frequently asked questions. No, because Rob will, Rob will <laughs> object if we start messing with that. How about, oh, if you go to um, pa the package listing here, do we see the standard library because we have GoPath set? Can we change something in tools? Scroll down. Is this now showing standard library? Yeah, it is. So we can change. We need to turn GoPath off. Oh. Oh, OK. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So we can add some noise in here. Oh, we can commit this. All right, let's commit it. This is perfect. Um, but we better add a go dot comment, otherwise we won't see anything useful. Okay. So uh, command tip go doc. Uh, is the start is the <laughs> beginning of the new tip dot go lang dot org server. Tip .go. Serving the latest head straight from the Git oven. <laughs> Straight from the Dutch oven. All right. Uh, git change. Andrew, tip. could you show me how to use the new Git review tool? <laughs> Here we go. Git change comes tip Godoc. New server work in progress. Tip. 
Don't hit. Hey, put that we're making a video. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mail it. Let's pretend I had a laptop here and I could approve it. Well, now I have to submit it, though. That's fine. You could, you could self-approve and say, Brad LGTMs. We may do a little cut here, because I'll have to open up like my corporate web profile. Oh, it's in the massage scheduler. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Life's hard. Um, looks good. Looks good. Plus so, two. Say, say Brad says LGTM. Oh, too late. And let me just check that our project is still running. Still running? Submit. All right. That means it's in the tree now. It's in the tree. Now go back to uh, this. Wait 10 Wait seconds. 10 seconds. Come on. Oh, it's doing it. Get remote HTTPS. Yep, there it goes. Pull it down. Switching sides. Building the new one. Is it too early for a high five? I'm not doing a high five until we actually see it appear. <laughs> I thought you were stopping there. <laughs> I'm not doing a high five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't high five. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it actually works. Oh. What? Speaking of massages. <laughs> you want it two? No, four? it's in 40 minutes. Right. We're fine. <laughs> Here we go, building Godoc. Oh, I should okay. check that this is still working. Yep, so Godoc A is still working. Now okay. I've got Godoc B running. S scroll down. Where is it? Search for tip Godoc. So it's not there. It's not there. Reload. Hit refresh. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's high fives. All right. All right. Uh, uh, ship it. It's done. Yep. You saw it here first. Uh, so Peace. thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, this has been an experiment. Hopefully, everything recorded properly. Hey, next time, we'll do uh, HTTP2 or something. No, probably not. No, I don't know when next time will be or what it will be. But we'll do something. We'll do something. See ya. All right. See ya.